that at this time we are going to receive Apostle Burns. That's how we can minister the word tonight. Amen. 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 To get out of the way, we'll receive offering after. Um, but God bless you. Let us receive him with a hearty amen. <laughs> seated in the house of the Lord. Don't plan to be long tonight, but just want to encourage you in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I needed God to do something for me while I was here in New York. And it was it was nothing short of a miracle. And the way it looked yesterday, it didn't look good. But how many know when you use your faith? Yes. And, and really uh, apply it. It's something that you believe God when you're in church, you know, and you're feeling good. But how do you know when you're in the heat of the battle? Sometimes, it, you know, you have to apply what you have learned yes. in the house of God and, and begin to defy the enemy. Somebody say defy the enemy. Defy the enemy. Yeah. Especially with your faith and with your praise and with your worship. Yes. And, you know, and I needed God to do something like yesterday. And I declare and decree uh, what the enemy tried to do and got canceled. Come on. Amen. Somebody just need to give God praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God for His goodness and His tender mercy. Yeah. Uh, I have been, I, I was working a, a secular job as well as pastoring and as well as overseeing. So uh, I haven't worked since uh, May, uh, the first of May, um, when they found some issues. And I thank God that since that time, God has taken care of me. Amen. I said Amen. since that time, God has taken care of me. Yes. And, I, and I thank God for uh, Apostle before we went. To home to be with the Lord. He called me when I was in the hospital and he said, uh, he said, Anthony, you're going to have to let the job go. And he said that, that the body of Christ has need of you. And, and you know, that sounded good, but I said, Lord, how in the world am I going to make it? How do you ever just have those moments where you just said, Lord, I need you to, you know, just be real for a moment. How are you going to do it? Well, it wasn't important on the how, it was, it was important on the obedience. Are you yes, with me? Yes. And as soon as I obeyed God, then things started working out. And I, you know, and I declare I've almost been a little bit busier now being off of work <laughs> than I was when I was working. But what I thank God for is that I never missed a beat. Look at somebody and say, now, you'll never miss a beat. <laughs> And so what I honor God for is that the word of the Lord through the man of God, God honored every word. Yes. And then when I, I applied for my disability benefits and, and retirement and, 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 you know, and if you know anything about SSI, you know, disability, it's very hard to get, for yeah. one. And then, you know, you need a, a lawyer, you need this, you need that. And, and I, when I checked, when I got out of the, the hospital, the Spirit of the Lord said, I want you to apply now. And so that was kind of funny. I obeyed God, I applied, and they called me the next day. Wow. Now, how do you know they don't do that? <laughs> and then they told me, they offered me, you know, supplemental benefits, you know, if I qualified. And that sounded nice, you know, that I just did what I had to do. I didn't have to go to the doctor, are you with me? I didn't have to go to a doctor's appointment. And in July, around July 15th, I got approved. Yes. Are you looking? But what the testimony really is, is that I made more being off of work <laughs> than I did when I was working. And so I honor God for what He's done and what He's yet doing and how we just, it's a walk, look at somebody say it's a walk of faith. It is a walk of faith. That you have to, you know, the Lord gave me a word and it, 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 when He said it, it was so profound to my spirit. He said that when he called Abram out of the land of your, and how many know he didn't even know the Lord God? He was among idol worshippers. Are you with me? Yeah. That was really his family background when God called him, and he said, I'm going to speak you to a land you know not of, and you haven't been this way before. Look at somebody say, you haven't been this way before, yeah. but God's going to lead you line by line, yeah. precept upon precept, yeah. here a little, there a little, but God 
God's done proven to you, and, and, and I want you to get to this, I want you to get this, is that if Abram missed one step, you would have been all beat. So each step had to be ordered. Yes, yes. Could I just drop this in your spirit that each step that you are make is going to be ordered by God yes. and that you're not going to miss a beat. Yes. And that, that is really the word of the Lord for this house tonight. I, I want to go to Acts chapter 16 and, and uh, through 20 and uh, see what the Lord has to say and encourage you with this. Look at somebody say it's time to change our culture. Uh, say it again, really decree and declare it. It's time for us to change our culture. It's time for us to change our culture. And this is what the Lord uh, wants us to know tonight. Really, uh, I've been ministering this for uh, a couple of sessions, but I really feel this strong in my spirit uh, to share tonight and to encourage you with. The Bible declares this in Acts chapter 16. And, and 16. It said, and it came to pass that as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And verse 17, and the same followed Paul and us, and crying, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And, she, and he came out the same hour. In verse 19, And when her master saw that the hope of their days were gone, they called Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and, and brought them into um, to the magistrate, saying, These men being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Verse 17, Acts 17 and 6, and when they have found them and drew, and they drew uh, Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, they have turned the world upside down <laughs> and are come hither also. I want to talk just a little bit about this time to change the culture. At this time, Paul and Silas uh, was in a certain city and they, the Lord used them, used them greatly. And there were signs, and there were wonders, and there were miracles. Uh, but it was, it was funny, it was a culture at the time uh, of, of, of soothsaying, and it was a culture at the time of the spirit of witchcraft. And, and how do you know that this, this certain damsel, although she had the right message, it was the wrong message? <laughs> And, and, and so she just kept, uh, kept on saying that these are servants of the Most High God. And they show unto us the way of salvation. And she did this, the Bible said, many days. And then told Paul, being grieved in the Spirit, turned around and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. I declare and decree that if we're going to get the job done, that this culture has got to change. Yes. Amen. I, and, and if you know anything, how many know you've got to be joined to your leader? Are you with me? Look at somebody and say, be joined to your leader. Be joined to your leader. And one of the things that I understand is that more and more and more often than not, that if you look at how the mantle fell from Elisha to Elisha, remember that there was a walk that they had to go through. They had to go through the different places of the school of the prophets. Yeah. And one of the first stops was Gilgal. Can I, can I just drop this on you for a minute? And I, I'll, I promise you I'll get back on track. Uh, just a little sidebar to what God is saying is you got to be so joined to your leader that you, your leader should be able to take you to Gilgal, the place of circumcision, yeah. to be able to cut you in those private places and you still stand. Wow. Amen. Amen. Cut you in those private places and you still stay. Wow. Now, a lot of times, whenever you get cut, you don't want to stay. A lot of times when you get cut or, or when you get corrected, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost like uh, the spirit in the body of Christ that nobody wants to be corrected anymore. Nobody wants to be told the truth. Are you with me? Yeah. And how do you know you're told the truth in love? Yeah. You're corrected in love. Yeah. And so you can be better. Yeah. Hey, you can never operate to your optimum unless you are cut. Yes. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you're cut without anesthesia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing to numb the pain. Are you with me? But God is saying, can I trust you enough that with this next move of God that you're going to change and uh, that it's going to cause 
an, 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 an effect and an effect. Are you with me? It's going to cause an effect in the earth, but it's going to cause an effect. Every move of God, I am convinced, is preceded by a sign. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. Yeah. There's a certain sound that this house has, are you with me? Yes. That it proceeds into the heavens and it literally opens up the portals of God, are you with me? Yes. Look at somebody saying, get ready for your sound, get ready. Yes. And so if you really understand what God is saying, and then the Lord gave me even a revelation about that, he said it's not just a sound, it's the vibration of the sound. Yes. Woo! How do you know when an earthquake comes, oh, yes. sometimes it's not just the earthquake, it's the, it's the tremors that cause the damage, are you with me? Could I declare and decree that some tremors are getting ready to come to shake up some things in your life, to shake up some things in, even in the spirit realm, to let you know that you're on track with what God said. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm on track, I'm on track. I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what you're going through right now, you are on track with what God said. And so, listen, if you understand that you're on track, don't allow what people say or think to deter you. Come on, that's good. And so here we find we find out here in the Word of God that the, the Bible said that they would begin to change the culture. Look at somebody say, change the culture. Change the culture. And so they begin to change the culture so much, and so they were called unto the rulers. They were called unto the magistrates. Let me tell you. Let me just dare to tell you that sometimes when you're obeying God, sometimes it will get you into trouble. Yes. Sometimes it will cause you to be in a tight place. Sometimes it will cause you to be in a place where you're saying, God, where are you? Did you leave me? Did you really tell me? Come on. Let's just be honest for a minute. Did you really tell me to do this? But I declare and decree that if God said it, if you've got a God said on your life, that God will back it up. And I just want to encourage the saints of God tonight that God is going to back up what he told you to do. Yes. God will never confirm it before, it'll always be after. Amen. It'll be always after your obedience. And so let's go just a little bit further. And so the Bible said that when they were called unto the rulers, the, the, they said they exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs uh -huh, which are not lawful for us to receive, yes. neither to observe being Romans. Now I want you to understand something. Now, many years ago, many, many years ago, England was a superpower. And one of the reasons why they, 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 they ruled almost everything. We even came out, America even came out of them. Are you with me? Right. And, and our history came out of them. And what they would do to change, uh, if they wanted to rule someone or rule a country, they would go to this foreign country and they would teach them their language. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. They would teach them their language. And one of the reasons, you know, it's going to be a little funny, but uh, one of the how they did it, was they would go to this foreign country and get them drunk. They would, they would serve them wine or, or, or liquor and, and they would get them drunk enough until they wanted to hear more. Are you with me? Yeah. And so they wanted, to, they wanted to get, they said, okay, I wanted to hear more about your customs. I wanted to hear more about your language. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yeah. The Bible said, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power. Yes. Now the problem why a lot of people from the inner city are not coming, or even different areas of our city are not coming, because they don't know your language. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. And so you have to teach them your custom. Are you with me? You have to teach them your culture. I, I declare and decree that God is getting ready to do a new thing. Look at somebody saying new thing. A new thing. And the Bible said now it shall spring forth. Yes. And so I declare and decree is that you have to teach them your language. Are you with me? When was the last time you left church and you couldn't hardly stand up because of the spirit of God was so upon you? Hallelujah. Remember the Bible said that there's one baptism but many refilling, many fillings. Yes. So a lot of times we need to get in the presence of God that we're refilled. Are you with me? Yes. That God fills us up to overflow. Yes. That our life has changed. Yes. That we will never be the same again. Are you with me? Yes. That means every time I come in, I want God to do something new. Yes. I want God to recharge me. Yes. I want God to fill me up. And so I don't even recognize myself. Yes. I declare and decree that a change is coming. Look at somebody Lift up your hands and just begin to receive it. And say, God, change me. Change me. Do what you got to do. Say what you got to say. I want to be changed. 
were teaching them and imparting in them and telling them about their culture and language. They didn't realize that the more they talked, the more they wanted to drink and the more they were receiving. I come to tell you that you get ready to affect this, this area, this community, and the surrounding communities. But how you going to do it is you want to get them drunk enough that you will be able to teach them your language. Are you with me tonight? And so the Bible goes on to declare. And he said that they rose up uh, against them and the magistrates ripped them. And the Bible goes on to say that they, they, they beat them with many stripes and then they put them in prison. Yeah. Could I declare and decree to you what they didn't realize is that the culture had already changed. Mm -hmm. Somebody go get that in a minute. I said the culture had already changed. But before they even knew it, the, the, the society as they knew it had already changed on them. That God had already done some things. That God had already shifted some things. Could I tell you, God is getting ready to shift some things on your behalf. But what he wants you to do is to get drunk enough. Come on, somebody. Get in the spirit long enough that you'll begin to stay there and say, God, whatever you want to do with me, I'm willing for you to do it. Whatever you want to say, Father, I'm willing for you to do it. I don't want to remain the same. I declare and decree to you that the Bible goes on to say that the Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. Somebody holler and say at midnight. Somebody's in a midnight situation right now that you need God to move. Can I declare and decree that God has already done the thing that you need him to do? But he wants you to begin to praise him even though you don't see him moving. Even though you don't see him working on your behalf. But by faith for a minute, begin to give God praise and begin to give God glory and begin to give God honor. Oh, I say it this way. Praise the Lord, friend. Remember what he's done for you already and begin to say, God, I praise you. I glorify you. I magnify you. And Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you do something new in my life. Come on, give God glory. God and they worship God and what God did he responded to their worship are you with me could I declare and decree to you that God has already responded to your worship that God has already moved for you and all you got to do now the Bible says add to your faith yes are you with me yes and he goes on to the line of things and he said if these things be in you and, and the bound will remain yeah. you will neither be barren or, or fruitful so I declare and decree to you that you already have what you need yeah. come on prophesy to your neighbor and say neighbor you already got what you need so all you got to do now is give God praise and give God glory and give God honor come on somebody give God praise give God Yes. But now I want you to trust me because we'll be step by step. Yes. 
Are you with me? I'm not going to tell you the full thing. I'm just going to tell you one piece at a time. I declare and decree to you that God is getting ready to move for you. And, and, and could, I, could I even just say it this way? That it's really already done. Yes. And so the Bible said at midnight, at midnight, the you know, priests begin to do something. Are you with me? Yes. And now I want you to get this. Now, again, I, I, I believe that the earthquake did something. But I believe that, the, again, the vibration of the sound yeah. begin to move. And let me tell you something, your praise, the vibration from your praise and your worship is getting ready to shake up the enemy's camp. It's getting ready to shake up the trouble in your life. The Lord gave me this message a little while ago. He said that your trouble has just expired. Yeah. 
enough. Look at somebody and say, get drunk enough. Get drunk enough to the power of the Lord fall. Get drunk enough until the anointing come. Get drunk enough until you feel like, God, whatever you want to do with me, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing for you to teach me your language. And see, remember, remember, remember when you received the Holy Ghost, remember how you felt when the power of God came in and dwelt inside of you and you were empowered. I come by to tell you tonight, be filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. Get drunk enough tonight that you feel so empowered that what you couldn't do before, I prophesy and I tell you tonight that you will be able to do it with this, with, by the time you leave here that everything that's been closed is going to be open to you. Oh, somebody ought to give him a praise. Come on. Give God a praise. Give him a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Serving a God that we that He does not hear us. He's, we are the beloved of God. Yes. But God is listen. The only time, and I'm learning this more and more. I'm not saying I'm mastering it. I'm I'm still learning it. But he, the only time we're supposed to labor is a labor to get into His rest. Amen. Not labor to worry. That's right. That's right. Are you with me now? Amen. Or labor to be stressed out. Amen. Or even to labor to get His attention. You already got it. Are you with me now? Yes. But now I'm about to say walk in confidence. The missing ingredient of your faith is confidence. That you have the confidence of God that God has already heard you. Amen. That when you pray, that the thing is already done. Yes. And so a lot of us are walking around, we have faith, but we don't have confidence to believe that the work is already done. Oh, glory to God. And I want you tonight to have the confidence of God that immediately and suddenly, yes. glory to God, yes. that the thing is done. Hallelujah. God keeps saying that to me. He says, immediately and suddenly, the thing is done in your life. Thank you, Lord. But you you got to walk in it. Yes. And walk with the confidence of God. Yes. That whatever God has spoken and said over your life, that it's not going to happen, it already has happened. Yes. The Bible said that he declared the end from the beginning. And if that's true, then all I have to do now is discover. That's right. Amen. It'd be crazy again for me to be in a diamond mine and pray for diamonds. That's right. Are you with me now? Come on, sir. It's time for me just to get to work. Are you with me? It's time for me to get digging. What I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of you right now are sitting in that gold mine, sitting in that diamond mine, and asking God to open up the window. He's saying it's already open to you. And God will never do what He's already has done. That's right. He said when He when He died on the cross, He said it is finished. <laughs> and so if we are working off the finished works of Jesus Christ, and we are. Then I have to pray now with the with the with the, the, the through the lens of a new perspective yes. that God has already brought it to pass. That God has already answered my prayer. Yes. So before I even called, he, the Bible said He answered. Yes. And so I want you to understand that what you stand in need of right now is actually already done. Yes. Yes. Amen. Ooh, glory yes. to God. Yes. Yes. That you have. Look at someone and say, I have what I say. I have what I say. So my question is, what are you saying? Yes. You are snared by the words of your mouth. Yes. And a lot of times you cancel the assignment of God and curse. we curse our own yes. self. Yes. Yes. Well, come on now. Let's just be honest. Is that when... Whenever you open your mouth and declare a thing and say God is going to do this, God has already done it, and He's putting His angels on assignment. But when, when the Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his way, yeah. and what does He end up saying in that scripture? He said, "Don't think, don't let that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord." Yeah, that's right. Now, what happens is when you start talking, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and negative things. Your angels then get confused. Are you with me? Right. And they go return. Are you are you with me? Yeah. But they can't deliver what they need to That's deliver right. on your yeah. behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna try to get this tonight. Yeah. And that the things that you you have need of, God has already answered you. God has already done it. 
But what he wants you to know is that he's just adding some fire tonight. And wants you to get, re receive even the refilling. Are you with yes. me? Yes. That God wants to fill you up in his presence. Glory to God. He wants to empower you in his presence. And then let you know that what you get ready to do, you get ready to take this city. Come on. Look at it. We get ready to take this city. I said we get ready to take this city. Glory to God. But the only thing they lack, they got to learn your language. Are you with me? And so God sent me here from Fort Worth to tell you, you've got to shake it up and you've got to begin to declare and decree what God has already said. And he said, silly and fear me. He's getting ready to bring you the power in your life. Come on, give God some pain. Hallelujah. The stretching is happening. Uh, but God is giving the glory out of it. 
He's getting the glory and the honor out of your life. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. And so, Father, we thank you now. We praise you now. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've said. We thank you for how you're lifting, Father God. Hallelujah. Everyone in this house, in the name of Jesus, God, we just praise you now. We glorify you now. We thank you now. Hallelujah. We thank you for the awesome anointing. Hallelujah, that's on the woman of God. We thank you, God. For my Rudolph, we praise you tonight. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, God. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you for how you're empowered in the Father. We thank you for how you're strengthened, the Lord. We thank you now. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that we're lifting up our hands, Father. We thank you now. We thank you for a brand new anointing, Father. Hallelujah, the stronger, Father, that what you have given to her, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for how you're going to use her, Father. We thank you now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for the people that you signed to her life. God, we praise you now. We glorify you now. We thank you for the awesome favor of God. Hallelujah, we thank you for the doors that will open. For the Spirit of the Lord says that there's great doors that will open for you. Great doors, great doors, great doors. Hallelujah. Because of your faithfulness. And the Lord said, I've empowered you. And I've anointed you for such a time as this. And the Lord said, you will go forth. And the Lord said, you will preach like you've never preached before. You will declare like you've never decreed before. The Lord said, get ready. Hallelujah for what I shall do in and through you. When the Lord said, I don't know almost high. Let your ways please me. And the Lord said, I'm moving. I'm moving just for you. And the Lord said, none of your words shall fall to the ground. When the Lord said, hallelujah, I am with thee. I am with thee. As I was with Moses, I am with thee. Say the Lord. So I give back. happen in this place. Glory to God. God is going to move in an unusual way. Hallelujah. In new life. I declare and decree. Glory to God that things are going to happen and it's going to attract people to come. Hallelujah. Let's just see what God is doing. So the Lord said, I've got to get you ready to receive them. When they're coming from the north, south, east, and west. So God said, get ready to receive your brothers and sisters. Come on. Prophetically, wave them in. Come on. Wave them in. Wave them in. Wave them in. That's it, wave them in. Glory to God. They're coming. They're coming. More help is coming. Skilled help is coming. Come on, hallelujah. They get the job done. They're coming in. God, we praise you tonight. We glorify you. 